don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's time to do another Artsy Trio collaboration with my friends Gina Ahrens in the United States and B. Grob over in Switzerland. So for April, it's my turn to choose the mood board for the month. So let's turn over to my other camera. I'll show you the mood board, I'll show you the colours and I'll show you what I've done for April. Okay, so this is mood board number seven. So we've been doing this for like seven months now. Time's flown so quickly. So I've named this mood board Mellow Moments because I've included some colours in here which are kind of neutral, subtle, but also very calming um, and just nice and relaxing. So we've got, now I don't know whether the camera's actually picking this up, these colours up perfectly, but we have some sagey green colours here in the suit, the tie, and this lovely kind of woodland um, wallpaper pattern that we've got here. But we've also got some beautiful kind of ochery, mustardy yellows uh, in that doorway there, in the brickwork of course, also in these ginger pots down here. But also there's this kind of geological rock formation here that's got those beautiful colours running all the way throughout. But also, we have some browns in there as well, so some real kind of neutral um, calming colours which is picked up in the cushions, the pillows there with those lovely plaids or, or checks um, which is almost a kind of biscuit colour um, but also you've got the drink there which is kind of a cappuccino kind of latte kind of look too so you've got those lovely kind of warm caramelly browns with the ochres, the mustard colours topped off with that kind of sagey, um, I'll say sage, mint, pistachio kind of greens. So that's really what I'm going to be working with today. For me these mood boards are all about kind of colour um, and also a little bit of texture too. So we've got some craggy textures down here, some craggy textures down there and that's kind of what I want to achieve with my little mini canvas that I'm going to create today. So let's put this mood board to one side. So I have a small art line um, canvas here I think it's about six inches yeah it's a six inch square canvas so it's only a little one it's an ickle canvas and um, which I picked up for cheap recently when I went to one of our local craft stores the craft box in Elsica um, and look I only paid one pound twenty for it which was a steal an absolute steal so we have that so I'll just throw the rubbish on the floor I'll leave it for the cleaner for later so I'm going to prepare the canvas. Now normally these little mini canvases are pre-gessoed. And I can't remember seeing whether it was pre-gessoed on there. Does it say? Unbleached primed cotton canvas. So it's already primed, so it's already got gesso on there. But I'm still going to add another layer of white gesso just to be on the safe side. So I've got some Dina Wakely white gesso here. Take the lid off. And grab a little brush this doesn't take long to do and I'm just going to go all the way around but what also this will help to do if like me you buy canvases and then you just throw them onto a shelf um, and leave them for weeks months possibly even years on end without actually touching them um, if they're not wrapped in shrink wrap or in plastic or anything like that sometimes they get a little bit kind of discoloured and a little bit grey and a little bit dusty and dirty. So adding another layer of gesso over the top, yeah, kind of hides all that dirt. So <laughs> it's sometimes a good idea just to whip around them again, just to kind of refresh the white, make it white white again um, and just hide some of that schmutz that you've possibly got on it while it's been in storage and that's another good reason to gesso so we'll do that and I'm going around the edges because I'm hoping that I might get a few dribbles and a few kind of texture runs down the side but I'm not doing the back so that will do for that so I've got my pot of water here <laughs> look it's actually clean for a change 
I'm almost prepared today. I said almost. Right, so I'm gonna give the canvas a quick blast just to dry that quick gesso off. Okay, you can always tell when your gesso is dry because it goes flat matte and stops being shiny. Obviously while it's wet, it's shiny. When it goes dry, it stops being shiny. Easy rule of thumb there. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a collection of resin casts from various different silicon moulds that I own. So I've pulled from different sources and I've got a tub full of resin pieces that I've already cast here. Look, I'll just show you inside. And there's all sorts in here. I mean, I've got bird skulls, I've got cherubs, uh, more cherubs look. I'm going to show in its bottom. There's bird wings, there's bones, bat wings, there's cogs. And I just cast these and throw them in um, so that I've got a nice selection to play with whenever I fancy just sitting down and doing a, um, a big canvas or a little canvas in this case. I've even got some decorative butterfly wings. Look, these were um, cast from, I think this was a Zuri mold that I got from Indigo Blue a while ago. So butterfly wings. Oh, they're beautiful. These have been painted, obviously. Um, I just tested out some gilding waxes on those, but I will get around to using these eventually. <laughs> In a project, there's also a little butterfly and a dragonfly as well. Um, or is it a bumblebee? No, it's a bumblebee. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's a decorative... I don't know whether you can see that, whether it's picking it up. But anyway, it's very decorative. And there's the bumblebee that goes with it. So those are the Zuri moulds. I got those from Indigo Blue. I believe they are still on the website if you're interested in those. Oh, right, okay, so anyway. So this mismatch or mismash of um, resin items, I've got, obviously you can see they've been done at different times because of the colours. That one's more white, that one's more creamy, and that one I mixed with a little bit of alcohol ink before I did it. So I'm going to stick those down um, onto my canvas and I'm going to use a glue gun. Now, if you were going to do this and you wanted some longevity to the project, I would suggest you maybe use um, a heavy bodied gel medium. Uh, I'm just trying to find a jar that I've got, um, but I can't just lay my hands on it at the moment just to show you. But anyway, a heavy body gel medium will work, but it will take longer to dry. Now, because I want to do this canvas um, real time from start to finish, um, with as little jumping and drying time in between as possible, um, I want to be able to work on it with the pieces being fixed. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun. And Ian bought me this new hot glue gun, which is an absolute monster of a glue gun. He bought me this for Christmas. Um, now I haven't used this yet. He has, but I haven't. But I mean, the glue sticks are absolutely huge. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's an absolute monster of a glue stick. So I'm hoping I get to grips with this. Um, but the beauty of this one is, is that it does have an on-off switch. You can actually turn it off. Whereas my old one didn't. You had to switch it off at the plug. So there's a bit more control on this one. <laughs> um, and already it started to go. Look, so I've had it switched on for a little bit. So you can always tell when it's ready because it starts dropping out little beads of glue. Okay, so I'm ready to go. Now I did kind of place everything um, on the canvas where I wanted it to be um, and I took a photograph of it the other day when I was working out what I wanted to do but I think I've accidentally deleted the photograph let me just have a quick look because <laughs> I think I've also cleared out my um, my rubbish bin yeah I have done I've cleared it all out so my own stupid mistake so I'm going to have to try and remember how I stuck everything back down again but I think this piece was the main piece so that was going to go in the middle so it's going to be a central kind of composition so with things like this um, you, you can do your compositions in whichever way you want so there's my red hot glue gun now you only get one chance at getting this right so let's get that down into the middle there So when I say about longevity and that kind of stuff, a hot glue gun obviously will stick and it will hold immediately. There you go, look. You can see, immediately that's stuck down. 
If you were using gel medium, then it would take a long time for it to dry. Even if you heat gun, it still takes a while for it to dry. Which is why I like using my hot glue gun for these kind of projects that I'm doing on the video. Um, however, you've got to remember that hot glue gun or hot glue, this stuff, reacts to heat. So if you use hot glue gun, you don't want to keep it afterwards in a place where it's going to get warm. So if it's on a wall that gets full sun, and you've hung it on a wall and it gets full sun, remember sometimes it might be warm enough for that glue to remelt again. Yeah, and it'll just start falling off the canvas. But I'm not creating anything which has any museum quality. So and I'd hardly ever hang my canvases up on the wall. So I can get away with it. But like I said, if you wanted something with a bit more longevity, then maybe use a gel medium. So these corner pieces are from a Prima mould, the thinner bare one I think, that has um, cogs and such on it. But this is the only kind of industrially bits that I'm actually putting on this canvas, apart from one other little label. Okay, so that's going to go onto there. That creates a nice little, kind of little frame at the top of the canvas. And then I've got this kind of moon face. I don't know whether you can see it. Been very much into my moon faces recently. It, Got a bit of a dribble there. I've done a couple of projects that have had kind of moon faces on them. So I have to make sure I get this the right way up. And I want to put that at the top of that little frame, kind of there. Now the good thing about the glue, of course, is if you get anywhere you don't want it, like that, just give it a minute and you can just peel it back up again. Hold on. You can't really do that for glue, can you? <laughs> like I said, this is the first time I've used this hot glue gun, so I'm still learning how to use it properly. You will get some strings, but you have plenty of time to brush those off and get rid of those a bit later on. Okay, so I've got a couple of drops, like floral rose drops. So these were from another stencil, not another stencil, another um, silicon mold set. Um, which had a kind of floral swag. I think it was the same one where this cherub came from. Um, but I can't be 100% on that without looking at the mould again and I've put it away. So and I'm going to add that just coming off that kind of little nub in there off the, the frame. And then I can add this one to mirror it at that side. So it's almost kind of Baroque, almost classical. But I suppose we've got, I'm going to have the cherub on it anyway, so it will kind of look like that, won't it? So I'm just going to get it sort of even. There we go. And what I like about doing little canvases like this is that you can play around with the compositions for you know as much as you want. Okay, so I've then got a couple of kind of little um, sprigs, like foliage sprigs. So I thought that I might just add those down there, just to give that a little bit more kind of momentum. Momo momentum, if you like, just a little bit more decoration. So we'll just have a little blob of glue under there. And drop that down just in there. Like so. And I'm not too worried about getting a little bit of glue coming and squirting out from underneath. Like I said, I'm still learning how to use this glue gun, so I need to learn just what pressure to put on the trigger to get the right amount of glue out. So, learning curve for me. 
There we go. I think I got the right amount on that one. So as it cools down, I'm just getting my finger in and just wipe away the excess. Okay, so we've got those two there. And then I've got two kind of like, well, kind of florally botanical kind of like rose medallions there. And I want to add those up there into the top corner. So it's almost a very symmetrical canvas, this. So I'm going to pop that into the corner there, just squidge it down. And the beauty is it doesn't matter what colour these things are when you make them and cast them because you can always change the colour once you've stuck them down onto your canvas as you will see. Okay, so we've got that. Now like I said we've got this cherub which I'm not sure whether it's picking up just yet because it's that kind of opaque white so I want to lay that across the middle like so but I'm not going to stick that down just yet because I want to add a layer of um, gesso over the top of all this lot before I do because I need to get inside here. So we'll bring back the gesso. I've got my brush. Actually let's use a different brush and I'm just going to flick off my glue gun just for now and then take my white gesso again and then just yeah, I can't see, there is a string there, I think. Yeah, it'll make it more apparent when we start adding um, the other colour. You'll be able to see if there's any strings that I need removing. So I'm now going to just go over and give all the items on the canvas a quick coat of white gesso. So again, I'll just whip into fast forward because nobody wants to sit and watch, literally watch paint dry. <laughs> so you can see the detail in the, that moon face that just came out when I started adding the gesso there. And that's the thing when you've got like pale white resin items, you can't really tell the detail until you actually add something over the top, but there you go. Right, I'll whip off and get this lot painted. I'll go to fast forward, play some music, and I'll join with you again in a little while. Okay, so there's the first layer of white gesso onto all the canvas pieces. Now there are two kind of distinct ways that you can do these little canvases. Um, you could, if you wanted to, paint all the items before you stick them down. That's a choice, that's just a design choice that you can do if you want to. I like to stick mine down and then paint, um, but others like to paint before they stick down. But like I said, that's really personal preference. Uh, as you can see, the darker ones have kept the, the paint just as nicely. Um, they are a little bit darker, but we can always add in a second coat of gesso. Now that's what I'm going to do. Now what I would have done normally is just left this to dry um, au naturel, just as is, um, before doing anything else. But because I've got time, I need to you know, keep this video kind of shortish, um, then I'm going to use the hot glue gun. Not the hot glue gun, hot, hot glue gun, my hot air gun. But bearing in mind I've used hot glue, so I need to be mindful not to reactivate the glue again. And again, you can tell when your gesso is dry because it stops being shiny. So, what I want to do now is just to add another layer 
of white gesso just really quickly um, just to kind of give it a second coat or a second layer um, only because that's just what I like to do before I start adding in any of my other colour. So I've just washed my brush. So I bring that gesso back again and then I can start adding in layer two. So any of those areas that I want to particularly pay more attention to. So for example, like these darker areas here, I want to add just a little bit more gesso on there just to lighten them a bit. I can do that now that they're dry. And then I can just whip over everywhere else and just give it a quick second coat. Okay, so that's had two coats of gesso now. So I'm now able to add on my main focal character, or my f main focal point, which is gonna sit there. But I also want to add this kind of industrial label too. So, and I want that to go down there at the bottom. So while the glue gun is heating up again, I can just grab a brush. Now I did mention before that you could paint on the canvas or you can paint off the canvas and then glue on afterwards. I'm doing this in kind of that exact opposite way. So because I wanted that gesso underneath here, if I'd glued that on first, I wouldn't be able to get the gesso underneath. So I'm just gonna quickly give this a run over with the white gesso. Just so I can hold that down. There we go. I mean, I suppose I could have just glued this down now. And then just sewed it while it was on. But I thought I'd just show the other way of doing it first. Sometimes when I watch YouTube videos from mixed media artists and they, they say things like, oh, well, you've seen me do this thousands of times before, so I won't do this, you know, I won't show you how to do this, that, and that, you know, X, Y, and Z again. But I always think, well, what happens to those people that have only just found them? You know, what happens if somebody's, that's the first time they've actually ever clicked onto that person's video? And you're basically saying, well, I'm not going to show you how I did it. So I like to kind of go through and just give people examples, even though you might have seen it a thousand times before, maybe just show a different way of doing it or just show a secondary way of doing things. But if you have watched my videos before and you're familiar with me, you'll know that anyway, that I do like to try and show different ways of doing things or at least talk you through different ways of doing things, even if I don't kind of show it directly or explicitly. Okay, so Monsieur Le Cherub, little pooty down there, has had one coat of gesso, and I think actually that's probably gonna be enough. So, I'll get those dry, I'll have a clean up and then I'll be right back. Okay, canvas back, first piece. Hopefully glue gun will be warm enough. Yep, lovely. So that can go down there at the bottom. <laughs> and then my little cherub. Alright, so it's underneath those two there where it's going to need the most and there and I'll do a little dollop just about there and just on the head just in case. Alright, get that turned round. Thank you. 
So there now is my little composition. I'm just going to wait a few seconds for it to just cool a little bit and dry. And that gives me then a chance just to have a quick look around to see if there's any of those strings which I can't see at all. That's fine. So we'll let that just sit for a minute or two and then we're ready to start adding some colour. Okay, so it's had time to cool down, it's had time to dry, that's not going anywhere, that's all really really secure on that canvas. So I'm going to start adding some colour. So if you remember the mood board was kind of minty, pistachio, kind of um, sagey greens, so that's what I'm going to add next onto the canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some green down on my mat here. This is Desert Cactus from Deco Art Americana. Um, you don't have to use exactly the same colours, obviously you just use whatever you've got in your stash. And I'm just picking some up. I've got some water on the brush first. I'm making a rather loose um, kind of wash. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the corners around the edges, like I said, I've got a real kind of watery wash and I'm going to go in and add that around the canvas, around the edges, really loose and watery. Because this is what I wanted, this is the sort of colour scheme that we were going for. That kind of loose, lovely, greeny kind of colour. Now, can you see, we started off, that medallion there was brown and that one was white. Could you tell the difference? No. Didn't think so. And that's the beauty. So nice and loose, all the way around, and then up and over on the corner. Let's get those corner pieces like so. Okay, so before it starts to dry, which it will do just a little bit as you're adding it on, I'm going to start adding some water. So this is going to loosen it all up and just let it start to run into those nooks and crannies. And because it's all very watery now, it'll start to pool and run into all the valleys the lowest points on the canvas and you'll start to get those lovely kind of drips and kind of aged look to it so we're going really fluid and also it'll help drop into the bits at the back the lowest points And you see, that's it, a bit more water, and if I just do under there, Again, just round the rows here. And we're just kind of picking up a 
and if it just goes over the edge a little bit that's okay doesn't matter if it's not exactly covered if there's bits of white showing that's all right don't mind that at all okay so let's just add a bit more water that will just encourage it just to sit in those pulled areas and then we can flip get a bit of run just tap backwards and forwards there we go so that's going to sit in those darkened areas in the lower parts so again we can either leave it to dry or natural or we can just give it a little bit of help Okay, so you saw me just turning it round, and that's just if there was any water underneath. By turning it round, it's just going to help it move. And then it just helps the process of, if it's not sitting in too much water all the time, then it dries quicker. Okay, so that's the first layer of kind of that green. It's not 100% dry, which is fine. So now I've got some acrylics. So this is raw sienna. So this is an acrylic ink. So what I can do with this is just then start introducing some of that kind of rich yellowy colour into the into the canvas. Just do it around. like so and then just a tad at the top and again I'm going to add some water and can you see how it just starts to spread and dissipate it starts taking on a life of its own so if I now tip that just to get rid of any excess water. <laughs> Excuse the squeakiness of my chair. And then just catch that at the bottom with the tissue and then just lift that off my work surface. I think I'm gonna need another tissue because that one's a little bit saturated now. Let me just drop that down and we start to build up kind of aged, kind of rusty, kind of patina effect. And you see, and you can't do that by design. You have to let it happen randomly. So you can just, just lightly, if you want it to move a bit more, Go. and then just let it sit <laughs> get that and again we'll just encourage it a little bit more okay so that's pretty much dry now there's still a few kind of moist areas in there just a tiny tiny bits of um, shine just in the middle but that's okay so just to lift it a little bit further now I'm going to add some some um, some sparkle some shine so I've got this um, mint sparkle wax from um, Finnebear so this again is that kind of lovely minty colour I'm just putting some on my finger so you can see it. Which is really, really nice. I'll just grab a, a cloth, a wet wipe, just to clean my finger. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a small brush and just add some to the brush. And then I'm just going to go over some of the raised areas. 
Now where it's going to go over so like the browns, it's going to create a golden colour because obviously adding a green metallic to a brown it's going to react and turn it more golden. Because this has got gold in it. So the gold yellow will react with the brown and turn it more golden colour. You see where it's done it down there. So if I now start to just dry brush this over the top, you'll start to see how the yellow tones start picking out. Now particularly if we do it, for example, on that moon face at the top, just watch around here. You see how it starts to pick out that gold tone. You see, I'm, I'm hoping you can see the sparkle. There you go. That's because the gold in the mint is picking up. So we're getting some interesting effects. So across here, so if I just lightly brush across the plaque, we'll start to get some gold appearing. But the dark areas will stay dark. You see? You see that shine now? <laughs> And then we can just go around now you can apply this stuff with your fingers if you want but I like to use a brush and just dry over the top because it, it remains more subtle if you like. So you catch the edges and you get the green. You catch the browns and you get like a gold. Definite kind of hints of mint choc chip in this. <laughs> Trust me, that ain't no bad thing. So I'm just lightly picking up the wax with the brush. And you can see it's on the brush there, look. And then just lightly going over the raised areas with that dry brush in action. very satisfying and of course it's wax so it smells wonderful too so you can see now look at the shine that it's picked up absolutely beautiful and there's not a lot really now that we need to do. Apart from just let it sit for a minute or two and then what we can do is we can come back with a soft cloth and just give it a gentle buff which should increase that shine. Just a little more. 
So I shall put the wax away. Give this a bit of a clean up and then I'll be back in a minute or two. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and it's dried a little. I've given it time to dry. So I'm just going to get a piece of um, tissue and I'm just going to just gently buff. There's a little bit coming off, which is fine. And then what I'll do is I'll just lift it up in a little while and you'll be able to see the difference. Just giving it a quick buff makes. Okay. So there it is. Now if I just lift that and then just tilt, look on the moon. The moon face. Look, can you see the shine that you've got from there? And also now if you look at his chest and his legs. Can you see that shine that you're getting? And then down here on the plaque, yeah, look at that. But that doesn't look gold until you do that. Look how beautiful that is. Absolutely stunning. So there we go. So there's the canvas. So I've got the gold from that kind of yellow and this, the raw umber. Was it raw umber or raw sienna? Raw sienna. So we've got those kind of warm brownie gold coming through there with gold from the um, from the wax and also that kind of pistachio minty kind of green. So there we go. I'm very happy with that canvas. Very, very happy. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this mixed media canvas for the Artsy Trio challenge for April. So don't forget you can join us over on our Facebook group there's the URL on the screen now, but there is a clickable link in the description area below to the Facebook group where you can join in and share your projects based and inspired on the mood boards for the month. But also in that description area below, you can find the links to both Be in Switzerland, the hair project using the mood board, and also for Gina's in the US. Um, so don't forget to hop across to those two and show them some love as well. So that's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.